Hey everybody, welcome to Woodworking Wisdom. My name's Colin Way, and today well, it's not a turning project. Today I'm going to make my my dad um, a Father's Day project. Now he's had enough red wine over the years to pickle his inside, so we're going to make a, a little piece of wall art for him instead um, for his um, his his boy's room, his uh, his little uh, uh, craft room. So there we are, a bit of bit of wall art. This is just simple pine, so a simple scrap wood. You could use bits of pallet wood, that sort of thing, um, with the use of some dyes and some colours and you can let your imagination go really crazy on this one. So let's have a look and see how we start. Okay so um, I've got a backboard ready uh, here already and this is 500 by 300 mil um, in dimensions. Um, what I want to do first is the background for the picture so we're going to do the sky uh, section and I've got these bits of old pallet wood to do that. We're just going to start off by cutting them to length and then I want to clean up the ends so they can uh, fit together nicely. And then we're going to colour them. So we're going to grade it, grade them um, with colour. So we're looking at a, a sunset scene. That's the basic thing. So once we've done the background, then we can put our mountains on on top of that, overlay them over the top. I've got a very rough sketch that I'm working to, so um, it gives me a, a good idea. So first job, we're going to cut them into lengths. Okay, so I've got the, the um, background cut. So all I want to do now, it's a little bit thick. I want to get lots of gradient in colour. So I'm just going to cut these in half so we have a lot more options to put more colours in. Um, and that will just be a nicer backdrop. So it doesn't matter. You don't have to be overly accurate, but um, uh, roughly in half would be fine. So that's the background all cut, ready to be coloured. What we're going to do now is cut the material for the mountains themselves. Now the peaks of the mountains are going to be left as natural timber, so the paler colour, but we're going to then dye everything else. Um, but everything's going to be the same widths in, in strips, so back to the bandsaw, we'll cut the rest of the material and, um, and get it dyed. Okay, so once again, we've cut uh, the mountain uh, uh, bits of timber. So what we're going to do is, again, just sand them up. Okay, so they're all sanded up. What we need to do now is cut the angle. Now, I did think to start with, maybe we'll go with a 45, but 45 degrees makes that, that mountain quite splayed out. So I'm going to bring him into 55, which gives more of a, more of a peak to it. So we're going to take all of our pieces. We're going to cut probably half of them to start with with that angle on the top and then I'm going to chop them off so we can use the next bits for smaller sections so let's just take a few to the the chop saw and start Okay, so here I'm just deciding on how far up the scene we want this the main um, the main mountain. The other mountain is going to be in the background, but this is the main one. So I want to get some a decent amount of sky, and so let's bring them down just a little bit there. And look, what I've started doing is putting some marks here, deciding on where roughly. So that was my first first thought, but now let's go a little bit bigger, and then. There we are, that's going to be my rough cut. I'm going to trim all this at the end, so it's going to be trim square, and we've got some capping frames to go around it as well. So if I roughly cut it to size now, that's fine. Um, you'll probably notice earlier that I've put an angle on both ends, because this end that we take off, we can invert, and then we can put into the rest of the scene. So we, uh, we're we already thinking about the next section. So over to bandsaw, I'm going to cut these first two lengths, and then we can work on to our next ones. Okay, so the next piece, so I only need to measure one because the other side is going to be exactly the same. So there, we'll go back to the bandsaw. Okay, so like I said, we're going to trim the bottom here, but 
I need a little bit just to fill in here. So I want to trim now so I can use these extra bits here um, at that angle because they should be enough just to get me there. So I'm going to pop the straight edge. And it doesn't need to be accurate because we've got a frame here. So I'm just going to go um, where it looks right and scribe a line across all of these which can then be cut off. Okay, so we've got the main uh, mountain done. What we need to do now is decide where we're going to cut it for the white caps. So I'm going to do this randomly. And I only need to do it on one side because we'll just match the other side when we get to the saw. So if I do um, the first one there, and we're going to go come back slowly with each cut to a little bit shorter. And then let's try and get it the same distance, a little bit thorough, uh, shorter. We're only going to do the top three. We're going to leave these two. So it gives the illusion then of snow on the top of the mountain. So let's go and cut off first two. I'm going to do these um, together in, in terms of length. Okay, so should go there. And then when these two are colored, this is going to stay white, all the, the, the timber color. And so that should give us the illusion of a white cat. We're going to repeat that on the other three and then onwards to the other mountains as well. Okay, so that's the first one um, all cut. Now we're going to work on the next one and the third mountain in a minute. And all I'm going to do is gauge where I want it, cut to rough length and then trim up and clean. And don't forget we need to then put the snow caps on uh, as well. So I'm going to get cutting and marking. So this is the same process as before, so we're just going to skip forward and show you once I've got these pieces cut. Okay, so there's the last bit, just slotting in. So what we've got to do now, we've got to number the back of each piece so I don't lose track of where it is. We're going to sand it, blend in the edges, and then we're going to add our colour, our stain. Okay, so we're going to sand all of the corners, so not just sand the ragged edges away. What I want to do is just very slightly soften each of the corners so the joins don't look so sharp. Um, and it'll just blend together nicely and the colours look better if it's slightly softened over. So every single piece now needs to be sanded. So all the pieces are now sanded. We're going to uh, look to do the interesting bit, which is add some colour. So I've broken down the mountains in their various bits. So we're going to keep the tops, the peaks of the mountains, um, uh, the timber colour, so nice and pale. And then I'm going to do a brown colour, a couple of different browns on the, the actual body of the mountains. And then the gradients for the sky, we're going to do um, a sunset. So we're going to start quite dark at the top, going into the yellows uh, at the bottom. Um, and I just need to... Um, empty the dies into their tubs ready to start doing that. So come on in and have a closer look. Okay, so we've got all of the all of the colours done. Uh, so all we're going to do now is just glue it back onto the board. I'm going to trim the board as well later on. Um, so all we need to do is glue it on. I'm not being precious about this. We're just going to put some glue on and stick the um, 
and stick the pieces to it. There we go, that should be enough. I'm going to line the black up first, just to the top edge, and then everything everything can be based off of that then. There we are. I'm just going to put a weight on that and just leave that for a couple of hours to set. Okay, everything's ready. So we've got everything glued up here in terms of the background. All I need to do now is put our individual pieces on. But just so I don't make any mistakes, I'm going to put them on dry first, do a little bit of marking out, um, and then glue in each individual piece one bit at a time. Um, otherwise, I could be in the wrong place. I don't know where we're going to be. So um, that's set and ready. So, yeah, we'll just start. So I'm going to start by just putting a couple of pieces of the big... Um, mountain on first and then going retracing my steps going back up to the corner using the small uh, mountain so may as well get started Okay, so I'm going to, um, now we've got everything on, I'm just going to put a very, very faint pencil line just in a couple of places because I want to just take this back off again and I'm going to add the glue and then just retrace my footsteps, do what I've just done again. Um, but this is just going to help me guide things. Before you put these pieces back on, of course, you can just um, use a rubber and just take these, these lines out. But to be quite honest, you're not going to see them. So I'm going to keep these there. So I know I can glue within this boundary um, and we'll be good. So retrace again. So back off with our pieces. I'm just trying to keep them roughly in, in place. So it's not too difficult to put them back again. However, if in case you were wondering, the backs are numbered. I do have a clever plan to put them back in case I lose them. All, right, all the bits are off now. I've got my glue in place. We're just going to um, glue within the lines and then I've got the, the nice bit really of putting everything back um, and making sure it's in the correct position. So we're just going to um, pretend we're painting a little bit of glue. I'm not going to overload it, but we we certainly need enough glue to, to do the job. Um, and to be honest, the open time on this glue uh, will be ample to put everything back again. So I'm not too worried. I'm just going to cover the whole uh, area, make sure I stay within the lines. He says, and he drips a bit on the picture. So there we are, that's all the pieces glued on. All we've got to do now really is to let that glue set and then we've got to think about our border, our frame. Now, you may have noticed, but we've got a different level here, but that's fine. We've, if you use the same packing pieces as, as the thickness that you've got for these and just do a little bit of a packer around that whole outside edge there, the frame will then rest over the top of that nicely and gives a little bit of a gap and a shadow as well. So we've just got to wait for that to cure now. Okay, so we're going to frame this piece just with um, some normal pine, but we're going to put a colour on it as well. So like a, a probably a dark brownie colour. Um, but you can do whatever you want. But what we do to start with is just make the mitres. 
So I've already sized two sides, um, and uh, we're just going to recreate those, and hopefully if we get them the same length and, and 45 degrees, they should all fit together nicely. So I'll start off by um, just cutting 145, and then I can measure, and then we can recreate the lengths. So, yeah, let's have a look. Okay, we've got everything glued up now, so all we want to do is trim square. That's just saving me time, um, you know, if we've overshot one of the lines, for instance. So just trimming everything nice and clean. Um, and then we can think about the frame. I don't want to take any more timber off in terms of um, uh, the length. I just want to trim, so get everything square. That's all I'm doing. I've already checked the blade, so we've got the right depth there. Um, so we'll just trim this first edge. So there we are everybody, we finished the main picture, all I've done now is just added um, a simple frame, just cut on a 45, um, no joins, just glued it straight on, um, just with a couple of little packing pieces to bridge out that gap there. So I hope you've uh, enjoyed that one, you have a wonderful Father's Day and um, whether you're giving or receiving a gift, um, enjoy it. Until next time, thank you very much, bye bye.